Uh, welcome, here we are doing a gastroscopy uh, with a Fuji EG760Z endoscope. So I want to highlight a few things about uh, gastroscopy for high quality um, everyday endoscopy. So first of all, um, in this patient here is under propofol sedation, uh, not intubated. Um, and we are uh, coming into the stomach, there's a cap on, which actually does restrict your field of view a bit. So you need to have that cap short, uh, and this cap is short attached to the uh, endoscope. And of course, we haven't got great visualization, so we need to improve that a little bit. We also got um, around the stomach and the body sitting quite a bit of fluid, so we can get rid of that just by putting down some simethicone. Uh, you can either do this or you can have the patient um, drink uh, something before the procedure, which uh, improves the situation. And just to pretty much as soon as you put that simethicone in, you also want to be sucking it out if your patient not intubated or awake so that they're not aspirating that. And you can see quite clearly how open the lower esophageal sphincter is here. So of course that's just gonna reflux all the way up if the patient has got no uh, obvious gag reflex and can cause um, some nasty aspiration if you're not careful. So that's one thing. The second thing is here, we've got uh, also a little bit, still a bit more of this very adherent mucus on the thing. So we're gonna just wash that off with some methicone, save a little bit of this syringe for the, um, for the duodenum. Um, so that we can demonstrate the whole thing. If we just go now to the duodenum, um, then to make sure we assess where. So actually that push in there is nice to get a good view of the duodenal bulb. Really, I'm into freezing the image, have a look, spend a little bit of time and then do this. It's a good technique for patients who are moving around as well. Uh, here we have a little bit of maybe potentially an erosion here, but nothing else and flip around and lots of technique videos uh, on the site to have a look and see how you should go around uh, the, from the first to the second part of the duodenum if you're having trouble with that because it can be a little bit tricky when you first start. And here uh, we've got a nice view of the second part. Interestingly here and with this particular endoscope we can get a nice view of the papilla just by pushing in. So here we can't see the papilla. So you can use a cap to see the papilla, a major papilla, and if you come back, come back like this, maybe you'll see it, maybe not. Maybe we get lucky, maybe we don't. Um, in this case, we were not lucky. But actually, when I was um, looking before, you could see it quite nicely by pushing in. Now, you have to get your position a bit better, maybe. So to get your position better in the second part, you need to, a bit of uh, clockwise torque, and then you need to extend and have a look. Um, and then maybe we're gonna be able to see here, or maybe not. Uh, sadly, maybe not. Yeah, maybe down here. Oh yeah, no, maybe we can see it. And so we've just achieved it by long form pushing in. And a little bit of the light reflex is annoying, but if we can just push off a little bit more, there you can see uh, the major papilla. Not really in the standard anatomical location, but um, not bad. So those are a couple of techniques to visualize the major papilla. The minor papilla will be up here in the 12 o'clock. Very, very rare that you can see that. Uh, unless it's uh, dilated or uh, otherwise abnormal. Um, gastric imaging we've covered in multiple other um, ones of these. So I would like to now cover um, in the absence of interesting things in the stomach. I mean, actually, when we look at the stomach, what do we notice? This is just something incidentally interesting for you. We notice that there's really no folds here at all. Entirely absent folds. We also see a couple of little nodular things, which when we go up close to them, we can maybe see better. I think we need to optimize the um, light on this endoscope, um, but there we just go up to them. You can see this as a totally a standard regular pattern, so not something to be worried about. If you're not sure, you can use BLI to tell the same thing. Okay, there we go. Um, and then the same thing for the other things that we detect. Um, we are having a good look around. We're pausing to detect abnormalities, something standing out to me uh, just underneath the flap valve there in the six o'clock, so we go up to that. Get onto it because of the light reflex, zoom in to analyze the pattern, looks completely regular, switch to virtual chrome endoscopy, looks completely regular, uh, that kind of approach of looking for things in the atrophic stomach. But again, as I said, not the focus of this examination. Uh, we will do that later. So one, one now wants to look at the esophagus. Next two minutes. So first things first, if you, want to, if you are using the cap, it can be very useful to look at the uh, gastroesophageal junction. We have one, let's put one of magnification on here so we can see the whole thing. Come back a little bit, same thing here, all the way around. Uh, look at it in white light. Look, we're looking for erosions, evidence of reflux. I don't see much here, I must say. Uh, and then we can put it uh, to virtual chrome endoscopy, do the same thing. Uh, and we're looking for an abnormal pattern, which 
I'm not seeing. Uh, we need to get the thing out of the way. The cap is really super helpful for this. Without a cap, I think you would be very much struggling uh, to do this uh, in this in this manner. Uh, I certainly couldn't do it. Uh, retroflexion is also a good way of analyzing the gastroesophageal junction, which you should be doing in all cases. And if you have an endoscope like this one, which has an excellent tip bend, then you can get the endoscope right in there and do the same thing from below. Um, so if the patient is nicely sedated, as this patient is, thanks very much to my anesthetic colleagues, then you have a very, very nice ability to get right up in there. Uh, and if it's competent, it may be, may be difficult to do, but you can get, if you're looking here, and if we go the other way around, flip the scope 360, then we can get nice views all the way around there in retroflexion. So this is totally possible if you need to do it. But I think we got good views with a cap as well. This may be a way to do it if you're not using a cap. And then most people who are using virtual chrome endoscopy who are detecting esophageal pathology are using virtual chrome endoscopy for withdrawal. So let's just get a bit of this dirt out of the cap maybe uh, so that we're not having that in the image. Maybe we have to suction a bit. Maybe it's not possible. I think it's going to be okay. Um, come back to the gastroesophageal junction and then just withdraw the endoscope so we're not, uh, not in any zoom. Bit of insufflation. Withdraw it slowly up the esophagus. Okay? Uh, and this will help you detect uh, little flat areas. And one thing that's very important is when you get to the mid esophagus, so right now we're at about 30, coming back more, you need to be on the lookout for flat squamous dysplasia. Um, because of course this is the point where you can intervene to make sure patients do not um, have squamous cancer uh, coming after their gastroscopy and one of the causes of post endoscopy upper GI cancer. So as we come back and we come back, maybe we'll find something, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. So there's something standing out in white there. Um, let's have a look at that and a little, little, little bit further into it. We didn't see anything else, but before we go to that, let's just come back and see if we can see an inlet patch. You can see one there on the left-hand side. If you're not seeing those routinely, you're not coming back slowly enough with your gastroscopy. Uh, so that there at the eight o'clock is an inlet patch. Okay, let's go back and look at what we found. Okay. So this was detected in a, in, a, in a procedure previously, and the person who detected it referred it for potential removal. Um, but what is this? Well, of course, right now we can't see anything. Let's look at it first in white light. It's a bit blurry, so of course we want more magnification. So what is this? Um, this essentially is a wart of the esophageal squamous mucosa or squamous papilloma. Um, that's what it looks like under white light. Um, that's what it looks like under LCI. And that's what it looks like under um, blue light imaging. And you can see again those capillaries coming up into the structure. But the pattern of this is almost villus from like and totally regular. Um, and what to do about these is not particularly clear. Do these progress to squamous dysplasia? Uh, the jury's out, I would say, but we don't think so. Uh, do they cause a problem? Maybe they cause a problem in a very small number of patients, um, but they are not, um, they are not uh, something we are routinely worrying about. However, is it completely the wrong option to remove them? I just don't think we know that. Um, a lifetime of surveillance for something like that seems unnecessary when you can just remove it with a very simple um, procedure. So that's what we'll do here. Very interested in your comments about that and whether you would also do that. Um, I think it also very much depends on the healthcare context uh, in which you work. All right. Uh, well, that's the end of this video. Put your comments below and thanks very much for watching.